I mean, so one of the things that happened um, in the Iraq case was that the US using its influence at the UN drew such an absurdly broad definition of, of what could have a military use that literally everything from dental equipment to you know saline solution to, to, to many of the things that would be normally used. I mean, the truth is that if, if, broad, if, broad, if defined broadly enough, anything can have dual, a dual use technology, right? Um, and so what, was, what happened was that under that rubric, the United States uh, and its allies, especially really the United States basically blocked Iran, uh, sorry, Iraq, from getting anywhere near the basic necessities of life and really in a dramatic way kind of de-developed that country, which and also prevented it from rebuilding from the, de the destruction that had taken place in the Gulf War. And, and um, what I wrote about in the New York Times op-ed is that um, I fear, unfortunately, in a, in a certain way, Iraq has become a kind of template for US policy towards um, other, a whole series of other adversarial regimes, which is to say, we don't like these regimes in these countries. In, so, in many cases, we have good reason not to like them. They're, as this, they're repressive, brutal regimes. The North Korean regime may be the worst regime in the world. Um, but we, instead of looking, and we don't want to invade because we've kind of lost our appetite for that, at least for the, for the moment, right? Um, but we're also not really willing to pursue diplomacy um, because diplomacy requires give and take, right? Um, and, you, and, and so it requires making coming to, to, rec to terms with the fact that we're probably not able to stop North Korea from having nuclear weapons, right? That di the real diplomacy would mean us probably having to concede that while we may be able to limit their nuclear arsenal, we can't actually repeal it. And, and that would reflect, or have, that would force us to, to actually accept the reality of how much power America has in the world. And so in, and, and, and so in, or in, there's this refusal to actually accept the actual amount of power we have. And this, I think, really twisted moral argument that says that the most moral thing to do is to have nothing to do with these with these despotic regimes, even though and and and, and impose a virtual siege on them, even though in so doing we massively harm the population that is already suffering under these repressive regimes, and that's considered to be the more moral position. Um, whereas, in fact, I think the more moral position is, and probably the position that is more likely to lead to political change in these societies, is to have more openness. And more um, uh, and more diplomacy, and tr and and allow more open, you know, bring these kind of try to bring more foreign influences into these often closed societies, and that would be better for its people and better for their long term prospects. Um, uh, but but it, but this politically is virtually impossible to do right now. And so you see that the Biden administration has not really revisited in a significant way most of these sanctions policies at all.